Greetings, everybody. I hope everybody's having a great uh, Tuesday. Um, and I hope everybody had a great MLK weekend. I know we have some uh, inclement winter weather, so I'm hoping everybody is safe. Uh, everybody staying warm. Uh, I do want to uh, briefly uh, talk about um, Chapter 2 um, for uh, today's e-learning day. Um, I want you all, again, to be safe. Uh, we will have an assignment, which will count as your attendance for today. Uh, so we're going to talk about a few things, uh, especially when it comes to research. Um, there are there's a place that we start, um, and again, this chapter two says where to start. And so, uh, as we are thinking about our uh, independent research proposal, uh, you want to start uh, in a uh, with a good foundation. Uh, and so, we talked about last week about the research question being one of those primary foundational. Uh, activities that we're going to do. We have to uh, design and think of a research question that will then lead us and guide us toward uh, the final product for our research uh, product, whatever we decide to research on, okay? Uh, so what I'm gonna do today is uh, talk through um, chapter two. I'll also come out of the slides uh, and show you um, and guide you through a PDF, uh, which I've uploaded to, to Blackboard uh, in that chapter two module. Uh, you'll see how to write a uh, research question. So we'll talk through uh, the characteristics um, of a research question, how you go about doing that, uh, what it should look like, what a research question that would be a little more vague and broad would look like, and then something that's a little more specific. Um, so the more specific we get, um, the uh, the more effective uh, the research process is. Uh, if it's too vague and too broad, uh, then it it makes the research process uh, a little more uh, ambiguous. Uh, so we want to make it uh, be a little more specific uh, so that we're able to kind of hone in on a specific topic uh, to do our research on, okay? So here are our objectives. Um, something to think about, again, um, you know, discuss how research questions, hypotheses, and predictions are related. Uh, each of us has talked about, and I mean, we know about what, what the hypothesis is, that educated guess, uh, and with an educated guess, you also make predictions about what you see or hope to see with your research. Uh, we'll talk about um, different sources of ideas uh, for research. Uh, we'll talk about, you know, making observations, uh, using past research to uh, to then kind of help us to then create future research. Uh, and then those practical problems, we talked about the difference between uh, basic and applied research. Uh, and so for myself personally, uh, applied research is really, really important to me. Uh, I talked about one of the projects I want to be going, begin to work on um, is uh, trying to determine um, those protective factors for individuals who are experiencing homelessness. Uh, and so what are those factors? And then what type of interventions do we need to implement uh, in our communities to help prevent um, those who are experiencing homelessness uh, and those who are at risk of experiencing homelessness? Uh, we'll identify the two functions of the theory, describe the three kinds of research reports, uh, and then we'll also summarize information, including uh, the abstract, our introduction, our methods section, our results, and our discussion sections of the research articles. Um, and so um, I'm going to uh, go to a research article and go through and identify those particular parts of that research article. So you'll get an idea of what, uh, when we think about peer-reviewed scholarly research articles, uh, they follow a similar um, dynamic and a similar format. And so when you're looking for uh, literature um, for your own independent research project or uh, for your collaborative research presentation, you know, you know those are gonna be the things, and these are gonna be the articles that you're gonna wanna find. Uh, and those articles are gonna have these distinct sections. Okay, and then the last thing is uh, summarize the fundamental of exploring past research in psychology. So what I'll do is, I'll take you to the uh, library um, and I'll show you a couple of databases um, using uh, psych info. Uh, and so, you know, for your uh, independent research project and even your uh, collaborative research presentation, you're gonna have to identify uh, some type of behavioral research. Uh, it could be in social work, it could be in um, psychology, it could be in sociology, but it has to be some behavioral or social science. Uh, but you can use psych info um, as a database or a tool uh, and many of these databases are free uh, at alabama a m on uh, the learning resource centers 
website. So we'll talk about that as we move forward. Hopefully we'll get done um, with this lecture uh, within the next 30 to 45 minutes. Uh, and then you'll have a uh, in-class activities and individual in individual research uh, question activity for you. You have to design your own, uh, come, come up with your own individual research question. And that will kind of guide you uh, towards what we uh, hope you're going to use uh, as you move forward for your independent uh, research proposal. Okay, so when you think about um, the research question, when you think about the um, hypotheses and predictions, again, this is where you begin. Uh, any research question or any research project is supposed to um, supposed to start with a research question. What are we trying to, or what question are we trying to answer? What solution are we trying to provide for a particular problem? And the research question is, again, that first and most general step uh, in the research process. This question that we uh, design, um, this question that we compose, needs to be specific enough so that my research project, and in your case, your research proposal, will be able to can answer. If you have a question that's extremely broad, um, say a question like, uh, how do you solve world peace or how do you create world peace? That is such a vague and very, very broad answer. But a more specific question might be, uh, you know, what area in human history uh, has been um, the most influential in creating peace among uh, the black and the white community? That is more specific, right? So it's not world peace, maybe it's a specific group or groups um, that we're looking to kind of determine what is and what have been the policies or procedures or interventions that have been created to help create world peace among certain or specific groups. Okay, then you have your hypothesis. Your hypothesis, uh, if I were to ask in class, uh, many of you would say that's your educated guess. Okay, and so your hypothesis is, an, and it's a tentative answer, it's a guess, uh, to what you expect to happen for your research question. Um, when you think about your research question, again, you want it to be specific and your hypothesis also needs to be specific. You can have several research questions that you're trying to answer, but, and if you have three or four research questions, you'll also have three or four research uh, hypotheses, okay, that answer um, those, or tentative answers to those questions. Uh, the last thing is the prediction, okay? So once you uh, design your question, um, you have your hypotheses for those particular research questions, then you're going to make a guess at the outcome of the study, okay? The the one thing that you're going to do is look at past research, and that's what's really, really helpful in this particular case. When you're making a prediction, you can't just make a prediction based on your general knowledge. Now, if you have general knowledge, then you kind of gain that general knowledge again, your observations or past research that you've seen, right? So you use a literature review, you do a lot of your uh, the, the upfront research, literature review at the beginning, you develop your research question, that research question um, is then used to then make a prediction. It must follow directly from the hypothesis. So when you make a prediction, the prediction is used uh, and is, is kind of designed based on the hypothesis that you come up with. And then your prediction must be tested. Okay, and the last thing it says, it must include specific variables and methodologies. So the prediction is based on the research question. The re research question allows me to understand what variables, what methodologies I'm going to have to use in order to answer the question in a specific way, and then again, create that prediction that I wanna see. So those variables we talked about are independent variables, are uh, dependent variables. We'll talk about uh, different apparatuses, uh, apparatus that we would using uh, to collect data, or to collect information on particular groups. And then that gets me to uh, the prediction, okay? So you got to design this in a way that I should be able to replicate it as another researcher, right? So you have your research question, you come up with your hypotheses for uh, your research question or questions, and then you create that prediction, which again follows directly from the hypothesis it's testable and it's specific enough that it has specific variables that you're going to collect or, or study and the methodologies that you're going to use to study. 
the methodologies as we will talk about uh, moving forward is the ingredients and the uh, the recipe for your particular project, right? So you're going to have to design a project that I can follow based on some specific instructions, specific rules that you follow. You have ingredients for or the particular supplies and the questions and all of the things that you're going to be using. It should be extremely detailed, specific, concise. I can be able to use it to then replicate your research uh, based on your research question and uh, the variables and methodologies that you use. Um, here is a, a diagram that you, that's coming out of this text. Uh, so when you're looking at your research question, though, it says general here, right? Uh, it's general, but it's not general to the point where it's just a broad, vague question. It's just a general way to look at the research project, right? So the research question is really just a description, right, of kind of broad topic of the study. So here's an example. Uh, it says, are there differences among groups in terms of cell phone use while driving, right? So as you look at this question, it is specific enough, right? So you could even take it a, a, a bit further. So it's asking for differences among groups in terms of cell phone use while driving. So you could take it even be a more specific and say among groups of males and females, among groups of a particular race or ethnicity, or you can say uh, males and females uh, students at Alabama University or male and females in the city of Huntsville, Alabama, right? So you can make it a little more specific. So this might be a more of a national question, but you can hone in on a specific state, a specific city, uh, to see if there are any uh, uses or differences in uses of cell phones while driving. The hypothesis says, again, the tentative ideal question, right? And so this is your educated guess. This is what I expect to happen um, with uh, the research question that I'm using. And it says, do females and males or males and females differ in their use of cell phones while driving? hypothesis would be uh, males and females, along with the prediction, uh, do differ in their uses of cell phones while driving. Okay. Uh, so again, your hypothesis and your prediction are uh, kind of interchangeable because again, we talked about uh, the hypothesis being an educated guess. That is your prediction. You're making your prediction on what you expect to happen. Okay. The prediction says uh, females are more likely to use a cell phone while in driving, again, that is more like a hypothesis, even though they say hypothesis is still asking the question. The hypothesis is the answer uh, to your particular question. Uh, it's more of a prediction and educated guess. Okay, so the, you see the relationships among uh, your research question, hypothesis, and prediction. Hypothesis and pre prediction are pretty similar uh, because what we learn um, as we were growing up, as you know, the hypothesis is an educated guess or a prediction. So your your prediction is the most specific you're getting to. You're trying to give an educated guess on what you expect to see um, from uh, the outcomes of your research. Okay, it's a deliberate guess at the answer to the hypothesis. Okay. So when you think about um, how we start to garner ideas uh, for our research project. Um, you have to think about, you know, what you're interested in. So for me personally, uh, I have specific interest in um, academic success in students, uh, foster children. You know, what are the developmental uh, uh, protective factors and risk factors for children in um, uh, the foster care system? And then also uh, I have a, a passion for those persons experiencing homelessness. So those are just common ideas or sources of ideas that I use, right? Uh, so just common sense stuff, right? Consists of things that we all believe to be true. So I believe that the more we study, the more hours you put in, the, the greater your work ethic, the more successful you'll be academically, right? So I want to test that, right? So what I would do is, you know, I would ask students how many hours you study per week. And then I would look at their grades. I would look at maybe their GPA or their, uh, their, their test uh, performance, right? And so that would be just a common sense thing. Um, you know, do individuals, uh, are individuals um, driving performance influenced by uh, 
a recreational substance, right? Alcohol, marijuana, or some other recreational drug, right? So I would, again, see if those who consume a particular uh, recreational drug, and then I would test them on a driving test. Maybe it's like a simulation or maybe it's a real driving test, right? To see if there are some differences among those who use recreational drugs versus those who don't. Um, you also can see, um, number two, practical problems, right? Um, we've been doing this for uh, since the evolution or since the creation of human beings. We see problems in our society or in our world, and we are looking to solve the issue. We're trying to solve and provide practical solutions to practical problems. When we were thinking about, you know, driving or having to travel long distances, at one point we didn't have the airplane, right? But that was a practical problem. How do we how do we travel faster? We first started walking, then running, right? And then we used some type of vehicle. Maybe it's a, a horse in, in a car. And then we they developed a car. And then we now we have trains and have airplanes and we have boats, right? So those are practical solutions to practical problems, uh, observations of the world around us, right? So, um, you know, I'm working on a project with one of my friends in, in California and in LA, there is a huge uh, homelessness problem, right? So there are about 42,000 people experiencing homelessness in LA uh, in just that particular city. So that's a problem, an observation we see around us, right? So how do we, how can we help, right? He walks outside of his house in L.A. and he sees individuals who are struggling uh, with housing instability. Uh, and so how do we how do we help? OK. And then the fourth thing is much research that we uh, have seen uh, test a particular theory of behavior. Right. So we have different theories like attachment theory, offering conditioning. Um, all of these are different theories that can be tested. Okay. You think about attachment theory, you think about the avoidant, the uh, ambivalent, and the uh, secure attachment. Those are those are different styles of attachment. And each of these styles has been measured and been studied over the course of uh, the human race. Um, we're talking about attachment, right? So individuals who grow up in a very secure, um, supportive environment usually have secure attachment to their caregivers, whether their caregiver is a parent or uh, a guardian. Okay. Um, operant conditioning. How do we test operant conditioning? You have reinforcements, you have punishments. Uh, reinforcements strengthen a behavior. Punishments try to uh, eliminate a particular behavior. And then another source of ideas is just past research. Uh, so we use past research, uh, which you will, will, will be doing, right? You'll be using past research, you'll be using through a literature review in order to uh, determine what past research has shown and then what can I do. Um, as a researcher, or you yourself as a researcher, to improve upon or advance the study of that particular theory or construct. Okay, so when you think about a theory, um, the theory is a systematic body of ideas, okay, about a particular topic or phenomenon, right? So the theory of gravity, the theory of, of movement or motion, uh, the theory of um, conformity. You know, social conformity. Do people conform to certain uh, situations in their environment? Right? How 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 much of we talk about nature versus nurture? That's a that's a theory, right? There there's a nature versus nurture theory. Uh, we think about how the the environment around us impacts, uh, can hurt and and help individuals in uh, performing a certain behavior. Um, there's a theory by Kurt Lewin that says uh, human behavior. Uh, is a function of our personality and our mind, meaning that there are two particular things that influence our behavior, our, our individual personality, who we are as a person, and then our environment, okay? So those are theories that can be tested over and over and over again. And then as we uh, confirm um, particular outcomes of particular research, then we either support a theory or we do not support a theory. And if a, a theory is not supported, then that theory might have to be um, altered or modified uh, to, to account for new data, okay? But again, theories generate knowledge. Again, we focus on that particular theory, and then we perform different research in order to either support it or find that maybe that theory is a supported. And again, like we said, the, the last bullet there says the theory can be modified uh, to account for new data, okay? But again, scientific theory, 
uh, again, is grounded in actual data from prior research, right? You, we're not just using anecdotes. Uh, we're not just using intuition, like we talked about um, in last chapter. We're not using those things, right? We're not using authority figures. We're using actual research to help support theories that are grounded in actual data that we collect. Uh, the variables and the research questions, all of those things come together to then answer questions about a particular theory. And then again, if the theory needs to be modified, it is often modified, okay? Uh, the theory of attachment has been modified over the course of time just based on different data that's been collected in the results of research projects uh, that were conducted. Okay. So when you think about past theories, you can't think about past research, okay? Uh, so when you think about re research reports, uh, you have what we call a literature review, okay? A literature review, um, there are three basic types of these reports. You have literature reviews, you have theory articles, and then you have empirical articles. For our independent research project, you're gonna be looking at empirical articles. When you think about empirical articles, empirical articles, they use observations and they collect data in order to answer questions, right? So we're not looking at any reviews, right? I don't want to see uh, an article that is just doing a literature review. They're looking at past research and then they're just summarizing what they see has been done in the past. I'm looking for specific empirical articles that have done research, right? They have variables, they have research questions, they have hypotheses, and they conducted a particular research uh, they have met, you know, methodologies that they use, they have their results, and they have a conclusion that they garnered because of the variables that they collected, uh, the data that they collected, and the results uh, are as a result of them conducting that particular research, okay? So literature reviews really just provide summaries of previous research on a particular topic, and that's not what we're looking for. Um, I'm not looking for that in this particular class. For our independent research project, you can use literature reviews. But for the uh, collaborative research presentation that you're going to do, that article that you all select, it should be empirical in nature. We'll talk about a little bit more about that in class. Uh, and we'll look at some empirical research uh, so I can give you an example of what it looks like. Okay? Um, a related concept um, to literature reviews and in literature reviews is called a meta analysis. So, what happens is for a meta analysis, meta analysis uses um, research, past research. They're studying the same theory. Um, they're starting to study the same topic. And that particular topic, maybe it's um, academic achievement motivation. Okay, so we talk about achievement motivation in students. So in one study, they studied achievement motivation in one study, and then they studied achievement motivation at another university, and they studied achievement motivation in Japan, and then in Australia. So there are maybe 10 to 15 uh, studies on achievement motivation in students and its effect on academic performance, right? So now they're looking at particular statistical procedures and they analyze the results of each of those 15 studies. They then draw a general conclusion based on all the results that they got from those 15 studies and then it becomes what we call a meta-analysis. So what they do is they aggregate all of those results and they get, a, they get one specific or one aggregate compiled statistic. And that one statistic shows me if all of these uh, research projects for achievement motivation are similar, right? If they're getting the same results or similar results, then I know that that particular theory is being supported by the research. If five of them are getting one result, another five are getting something totally different, and then the last five are just all over the place, then I know that those particular research or that particular construct or theory still needs some work. Uh, because again, I have projects that are very, very similar, research projects that are really, really similar in a particular topic aren't getting the same results. And so I need to see if, you know, I can help as a researcher to uh, to get some information that is more more consistent across different research studies. Okay. When you think about theory articles, theory articles are, uh, they just integrate research, right, to provide a new framework for understanding something, right? So if you think about um, a construct like achievement motivation. Achievement motivation is something that's very, very vague and broad, but it's a theory that could be used and research from different projects 
can be used, you can integrate it together to then form a new framework about achieving motivation. So what, what a what model is it? What, what does that look like, right? So maybe achieving motivation is not the, uh, the only thing that helps to improve academic performance in the classroom um, or uh, general performance in, in life, right? Maybe it's the person's personality as well. Uh, maybe it's their uh, social support or their social support and their, their, their support network. Maybe there are three different variables that have to be combined in order to help improve academic performance or performance and life uh, outcomes generally, right? So maybe it's a new framework that needs to be formed. Instead of it just being academic motivation, I, we, we've seen in the research that it's not just achievement motivation, maybe it's something else uh, that needs to be combined with achievement motivation to improve uh, performance and life outcome. And then the last piece, uh, the empirical research article. These are the research articles that I want us to focus on, especially for our collaborative research presentation. The empirical research article uh, is a report on studies in which data were gathered to answer specific research questions. This is what you're going to be doing as a researcher for your independent research proposal. You're going to be doing and creating an empirical research proposal where you have to create your abstract, your introduction, your literature review, your method section, your results section, and create a, this, a discussion. Uh, in your um, independent research proposal, you won't be collecting data per se, but you will give me an anticipated results section. So I want you to anticipate, I want you to provide a prediction on what you expect, uh, what kind of data you expect to collect, what kind of results you, you expect to see from your methodology that you use. And then you're going to use your results to then give me what you anticipate your future research looks like, what your limitations were for your particular research, and and then what you your implications that you see moving forward. What kind of implications does it have on society? What kind of implications does it have on uh, the individuals that you're studying? Right. So this is the type of research that is uh, more grounded in again finding that research question finding um, or de designing or creating the hypotheses and your prediction for your research question. And again, these are the types of articles that I want you to be focusing on when we think about um, your collaborative research presentation in your group, okay? But again, empirical research presentation, or excuse me, article, it has five distinct sections. When you see these sections and when you see a research article, a peer-reviewed research scholarly article, you're gonna see that these are uh, the sections that you're going to see, and they're more they common. When we talk about that common language, you will see these sections across articles uh, all over the world. Um, if you're presenting an article, uh, if you're publishing an article, it's going to have these sections. Okay. So when you think about the sections, okay, you got the abstract, your introduction, your methods, your results, and your discussion. I'm going to go through these briefly, and then we'll talk a little more about them um, on Thursday. But the abstract. Um, it's just a summary of the research report. The abstract is usually done after you've written the entire paper because since it's a summary, you're going to summarize everything that you've done. You're going to summarize uh, the introduction. You're going to summarize your method section. You're going to summarize your results. And you're going you're gonna to even uh, summarize some of the implications that you have for uh, that you created at the end of the discussion section, right? So your abstract is just a summary of the research report. Uh, it's usually between 150 to 250 words. Again, it's going to include hypotheses, the procedure, and broad pattern of results. So these are the three things that you're going to usually include in your abstract. And so you see why you would want to write this last, because you're going to have to include your hypothesis, uh, procedure that you did for your method section, and then a broad pattern of results that you've got. And so for your abstract, what you'll do for your independent research proposal is you'll create some anticipated research, research, excuse me, results, and you'll put those in your abstract. Okay. Um, again, you're not going to include as much information, but you will include a little information from your discussion section, right? Like you might include some uh, implications. Uh, you might include maybe some of your limitations, but it's going to be very, very limited in the amount of information that you include from your discussion section. Your introduction. Your introduction is probably the most important, um, probably the most difficult section to write. 
Uh, and I include introduction and literature review in the same section. So you'll have a brief inter introduction and I'll go over um, what this is gonna look like. So you'll have a brief introduction, which should be about a page, right? And then you should have your literature review, which is underneath your uh, introduction, right? So your introduction is going to talk about the problem, right? It's gonna, it's gonna introduce the problem or provide a problem statement. Then what you're gonna do is go into past research, uh, any other relevant theories, any other constructs or uh, variables that need to be identified or defined. And then you're gonna give some, ex some specific expectations, right? Of what you expect to happen. So often this is done with your hypotheses and your predictions, right? But again, you're looking at past research, what has been done in the past, what's being done currently, and then what and how uh, can your research add uh, to what's being done and what, what has been done in the past, right? So this introduction is really, really important. Uh, as you introduce the paper, right, it sets the tone uh, for the rest of your writing um, for that um, particular project. Um, and as, again, I want to include your literature review. Um, so, um, you, you, you know, this past research, relevant theories are described. This would be your literature review. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to uh, uh, edit this, put literature review in there, uh, because this is going to be the most important uh, part of uh, that introduction to literature. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, again, the other section is the method section. <clears throat> Method section, one of the most pivotal um, because uh, it helps. And we talked about using uh, the, the community of researchers. And we're, we're like, uh, we're not adversarial in a way. We're kind of adversarial because we want to know what other, what other people are doing. <clears throat> and the way to know that is by these articles that they, that they publish. Uh, I've published a few, but the most important piece of your empirical research article for a particular researcher who wants to help maybe expand on your research or replicate your research is your method section, okay? It details your exact procedures that you use. So this, this is the recipe. It provides the recipe. It's divided into subsections depending on the complexity of your research design. So it might include different uh, apparatuses that you use. It might include you know, your participants. It's gonna include your procedure. It's gonna include maybe your testing material. So maybe if you're using a, uh, if you're doing some survey research, then you'll, you'll include your survey. You'll include some sections of your survey, what kind of questions your survey is asking, and the purpose of the survey that you'll be using, right? It's important to include maybe some example questions that you'll be using in your survey. Right, so it overviews the design. Right, are you using? Are you doing a, a survey design? Are you doing an experimental design where you're doing a uh, an experimental group and a control group? Are you doing a uh, more of a qualitative research design where you're doing the focus group or structured interviews? Right, you're going to identify what the design is. You'll identify the characteristics of your participants. Are these individuals? Uh, eighth graders in the Huntsville City School System um, who live in the north side of Huntsville, or are they uh, north, you know, are they uh, elderly individuals in a particular housing community or assisted living community uh, in uh, rural uh, Madison County, right? You gotta be specific. You have to identify what is the range of their, uh, their ages, right? Do they have a specific age? Um, do they have a specific, uh, issue that they're doing to these individuals? Are they all individuals who are experiencing uh, uh, dementia or Alzheimer's, right? You want to be as specific as possible when you characterize uh, your participants. And your procedures have to be spelled out like a recipe. Uh, you provide your ingredients. The ingredients are your equipment, your testing materials. Um, it's like baking a cake, um, like I talked about in last last lecture. You want to be able to bake that cake. I want to be able to read your method section and be able to produce what you produce, right? It might not look the exact same, but it should be very, very close. Um, your results section. Okay, your results section is really just a descriptive narrative uh, of what you found um, as, after you collected your data, 
after you've conducted your interview, after you've made your observations in that social place, whatever it is, these are findings that you present. Your results section doesn't have to be a very, very long, drawn out um, section. It does need to be very, very concise. It doesn't, be, it doesn't need to be really wordy. All of the words or most of your words should be in your introduction, your literature review, and your method section. Your results section should be very, very concise. Okay, You're going to use some description of statistical language. You're going to maybe use some tables and graphs to kind of identify and communicate what happened. Right. So if you have a... Uh, uh, your participants and the characteristics of your participants, maybe that's a, a table, right? Maybe you're identifying, um, you know, who they are, you know, their age, their gender, their race, what grade they're in, uh, what their GPA is, what their household income is. All of these are descriptives and you can provide that in a table form. Uh, if you're looking at um, grade performance, performance levels, we talked about achievement motivation. So those who have higher achievement motivation, have higher grade performance, right? So I want to look at the average grade performance, look at, you know, those who have lower uh, achievement motivation versus those who have higher, but they have a bar graph that show different levels. You know, these individuals who have high or lower achievement motivation, their bar is here. Those who have higher achievement motivation, their bar is here in a graph. A bar graph, you could do uh, I don't know, a pie chart, you could do histogram, whatever those things are, but you want to be very, very concise. Uh, when you're, you're you're doing your results section. And then the last section is your discussion section. Um, again, you're looking at um, three specific things, right? You want to talk about whether your results support your hypothesis um, and, and li list any possible explanations or alternative, ex alternative explanations for why or why not, okay? You want to look at how your results compare with past research, right, on the particular topic. And then you want to look at possible practical applications and future research. So there are three sections that you're going to want to focus on, and I'll we'll detail these in more detail as we move forward in the class. But you want to look at what are your limitations? What limitations did you encounter uh, as you conducted your research? Number two is what are the implications of your research, right? The possible practical applications of your future research. Like what, what else can I do? What can my research, what other questions can my, my, my research uh, answer? What other solutions can uh, my research and the results of my research provide to other research questions? And the last thing is future research, right? What else can I do? What can I do to improve on the research that I conducted? What else can I do, right? Um, that'll help the reader understand where the researcher is going. And it provides maybe some inspiration. We talked about other sources of ideas. If I read an article and they give me some, some, you know, future research ideas, maybe I take that future research, right? Those ideas and then, and then go and move forward with those future, that future research. Okay. <laughs> so one of the biggest things um, that we'll do in this class, and I want to, I want to teach you as I talked about at the beginning of the class, I want each of us to be and become and identify as researchers, right? We're already researchers in our own respects because we all do research in our own way, whether it's uh, looking up different techniques in uh, makeup, or maybe it's other beauty techniques, or maybe it's doing research for, uh, I'm, I'm a sports fanatic. Maybe I'm doing like who's leading the, 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 the league in rushing right now, or who's leading the league in passing or passing touchdowns or QBR, right? I'm a researcher. I, I do my due diligence. Um, how tall is LeBron James, right? Um, where did uh, Kamala Harris receive her undergraduate? Where did she receive her uh, her, her PhD or her doctorate, right? Those, that's research. It's, you, you have an idea, you have a question, and then you go do the research. There is an, uh, an enormous number, when you think about scholarly research, um, there's an enormous number of psychology uh, in which researchers publish the results of their investigations. Uh, I've presented, um, I've published research in, in a few journals, right? But there are hundreds of journals, and, and it's not just psychology journals. You have journals in sociology, you have journals of criminal justice, you have journals of medicine, you have journals of education. Um, but again, you most specialize in one or two topic areas. Most, most journals are going to specialize in a particular topic area, right? So if I'm looking at um, an education journal, you're going to look at maybe retention 
or academic success in students. Maybe you're looking at uh, students in mental health, right? So those are different topic areas that we can look at, right? Um, online scholarly research databases are used to locate information. So I'm going to have Miss um, Thetis Bryant um, out of the library. She's a uh, she talks about information literacy, being able to identify quality research is really, really important. There's a lot of research out there. there. There are a lot of sources of information out there. You have to identify those things and those sources that are um, a little more factual, a little more vetted, right? So a lot of these journal articles um, that you're going to uh, identify and read, they're vetted by what we call a peer review process. So I'm going to take you to uh, the Psych Info. Um, which is, a, again, a, a digital database that maintains kind of abstracts of articles. And then we'll talk about uh, kind of how we navigate that. All right, so let me get out of my slides here. Let me stop uh, presenting and let me go to uh, the internet. All right, so when you think about the internet, okay, I want you to, you can't, you can go, I'm going to go, let me do a few things. I right, have move my, my image down. Right, so we can do a few things. You can go to Sweet Google Scholar, okay. I just can. Okay, you can go to Google Scholar, which is something I've done before. It's Google Scholar, just Google it. Okay, uh, click on Google Scholar. So if I wanted to look up a um, a research article, say I want to look up. Uh, mental health on academic performance, okay? Here are articles that you can select from, okay? Um, so let me click on one before I go to Psych Info. Um, here's one that was published in 2020. Uh, it's been cited by 86 uh, researchers or papers. Uh, so I can just click on the HTML. Let's go here and see what it looks like. So here is a review article. So except, all right, here's a review article. And what you'll see, and here are your articles, your, your uh, authors listed here. Uh, it says, Optimizing Students' Mental Health and Active Performance, AI Enhanced Life Crafting, right? So a few people have downloaded. This is your introduction, right? You can read through that. Um, Again, there's different sections in your introduction, life crafting, just identifying, you know, what the mental mental health and acting performance looks like as far as the introduction, what past research has shown. It looks at uh, life crafting, what past research is showing me and, and identifying and defining what life crafting is. Um, Internet-based healthcare, right? Uh, mental health chat box, right? All of these are, but it's not really giving me anything empirical. Right, it's really just a review. It's just a conceptual model. Uh, it's really not giving you anything empirical, and then it gives you a discussion. Right, so this is not really an empirical article. This is a review article. So it's just reviewing um, different concepts, different uh, constructs, different theories, and it's putting them in an article. So you can read this to gain a little, a lot more information. So if you wanted to use this article as a in your literature review, it's perfect. Right, um, let's go back. So let's see, that's the ED. Here's, here's going to be one right here. So this is cited by, um, says the mental health and academic performance, a study on selection and causation effects from early child or from childhood to early adult. So let's go springer.com and see what this is talking about. All right, except all cookies. All right, so this is the social psychiatry plus psychiatric epidemiology. So this is a journal, okay? This is a journal and it has articles published in this particular journal, right? So you go down, here's the abstract, right? You got the purpose, you got the methods, you have the results, right? So here are all the sections that we talked about. This is an empirical article. It lists the abstract, gives you your introduction, which will include your literature review, your methods section, your results, and a discussion, which includes your limitations, your future research, um, and any implications that you have 
um, for this particular research project. And then it has a conclusion, right? So this is a research article. And you can go in and fill up a research article. You can see you got your method section. It gives you your subjects. It gives you, gives you your procedures, right? Okay. It gives you your instruments, the instruments that they use, the self-report scale, design to screen, postnatal depression, community samples, right? You go down, you got registered data. This is a Swedish school system. Sociodemic, sociodemographic factors. Uh, this is a data analysis. So in your um, in your independent research proposal, you're going to have to give me your proposed data analysis. How do you plan to analyze the data that you collect? What this does and, and allows me to see is what have you learned about statistics, right? These are going to be statistical terms that you're going to have to use. Um, again, and past research will give you some ideas at how to analyze the data that you collect. Right. If I'm looking at two specific groups and maybe I'm looking at the two groups, uh, one group has low academic achievement or academic motivation. The other group has high academic motivation. Right. I'm looking at their GPAs. I'm comparing the two groups. That would be since I have two variables, I'm comparing the means of two groups. That would be a T test. Right. So I know that based on uh, the analysis. So you'd be required to do that. Right. So this is data analysis. You have your results. Right. So it gives you table, um, gives you different models, social selection. You got a bivariate analysis. Right. And then you have your results. Right. Your discussion section. Right. OK. So that is a research article, empirical research article. All right. You can go to Google Scholar. This is a great place to start. Or you can go to our library database. Um, I go to Library Learning Resources Center. And I got to go back. So all I do, um, if you don't know where to go initially, I just type in Alabama and um, uh, Library. And I type in, and you could just do a library. Let me get that out of there. Okay. Press Enter. It gives you the same results. You click on, um, I'll go down and click on Learning uh, Resources Center. Okay. Uh, since the Learning Resources Center, uh, this is separate from the library, you click on uh, this separate web presence here. And this is where you'll be taken. All right. If you have a um, an account already, you'll go to log in. You'll enter your account. So this is mine. I think it's two. Right, you'll have your PIN number, it's a four digit PIN. You'll create that, log in. So, this is mine. All right, so what you'll do is for me, what I usually do, you can go to online databases, right? Online databases, and I'm just giving you a brief uh, review. Um, uh, Mrs. Ms. Thetis Bryant, Mrs. Thetis Bryant will give you a better overview of how to do this, and you will be tested on some of the things that she covers. So, be mindful of this. All right, so. So that's the psych info, right? So I go to P, and it has it by alphabetical order, right? So I'm going to go down to psych. If it's here, let me see. I don't see it, and I might have to look it up, Google it. Let's see. Let's go to psych. But I don't have any matches here. So what you could do then is usually what I do. Back out of here. Okay. Um, I usually go to let's go psychology. Let's see if I find anything. Right. So here it is. APA psych info. All right. So instead of it, instead of it just being uh, psych info, it is APA psych info. You'll click there. Um, you're gonna, it's going to require, once you have your account, it's going to require that you have your A number uh, and your PIN. So you'll log in. And now you have access, right? So if I wanted to, um, you have, you can enter in some keywords here um, based on 
books, journals, or anything else. So what I usually do, um, and uh, Miss Brian is going to teach you a few more search tools, but you can type in, I'm going to go mental health. and college students. Search. Spinning. All right. So I have 19,283 results. Okay. So here's a dissertation thesis. Here is an academic journal. Right. Um, this one was published in, uh, let me see if they have it here. I don't think they have the published date here, uh, but what I, what you can do is so instead of I, so for the re, the research to be relevant, what you want to do is you want to identify academic journals, right? So in order for me just to go ahead and, and eliminate some some things, I want to look at the date and I want to look at academic journals. So I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, limit or you know, kind of reduce the, the, the search a little bit, right? So in order for research to be relevant and not dated, I don't want historical research. I want something within seven years of uh, the published date, right? So since it's 2024 now, I'm going to go seven years from 2024, which would be 2017, okay? So I'm going to go here and put in 2017 as the from date and leave the publication date is 2024. I'm going to select just academic journals. You can select anything, dissertations, books, but we're looking for everything that's academic journal, all right? So we went from 19,283 to 7,918, and you can even hone in a little bit more on some more limiters that would then be back, okay? So let me click on this one. This is an academic journal. Click academic journal. And so now it gives you uh, your authors. It gives you the source. So this is the applied uh, psychophysiology and biofeedback jur uh, journal. Okay. Uh, this is your publisher. This is the journal right here, biofeedback and self-regulation. Um, talks about keywords. Abstract is your abstract, right? So the abstract gives you uh, things that we talked about. Right. It introduces what the topic is. It gives you your procedures. And then it also talks about some results kind of in um, in summarized form. OK. All right. So those are my results. Let me go back. And look. if you saw, let's go back. You see this says check for full text. So I click check for full text. And right now. It does not have the full text, but it's still loading, so we'll see. Um, but what you'll see is for some of these, some of them have full text, so you can kind of you don't have to go buy anything. You just look at the results. So let me find one that has full text. All of these are saying check the full text. I need one that says full text. So again, here's one right here. It says a crisis in college student mental health self ratings of psychopathology before and after the COVID pandemic. So here is. The PDF full text. Okay, and this one we'll see when it was published in 2023. Okay, so you have your authors here. This is your abstract. Again, this is empirical. So you're looking at the introduction, the literature review here. All right, this is your method section. Okay, it gives you, uh, you know, who your participants are. Your your data and the plan. So this is what you'll provide, your uh, anticipated analysis, and then your results. And has a table, and then it has your discussion section. All right, so this is an empirical research um, article, okay? Has your has all of the sections that we talked about, and again, that's what we're looking for. Again, as you're doing your research and uh, literature reviews, and as you're looking for a particular order for your uh, collaborative research project, this, these are the types of projects and, and research articles that you're going to be using. Okay. So just a brief overview of that. Um, let me go back to uh, this slide. 
All right. So again, we looked at uh, this should be let me let me do this differently here. So the APA, and I'll update these slides. Slide info. Okay. And I think I have something else that I want to change as well. Yep, literature review. Yeah. All right. So again, I'll, I'll let you take a look at these slides. I'm not going to go over in detail. Uh, I really want you to kind of go through these and um, kind of go through and find some of those. Uh, I talked about the author. I talked about you know uh, the publication title, the source. I looked at the abstract. Again, the psych info is going to give you a lot of information. There are some information that you can provide. You see the full text there. Uh, the DOI. Uh, is the digital object identifier. Um, again, this is particularly helpful when you're trying to include uh, full text sources of an article, right? Uh, you wanna, uh, when you're doing your article, um, your reference li list, you wanna provide this um, because it helps define that uh, that full text, okay? So again, the DOI you'll see um, located at the end of a reference or a source. All right. Here is a resource. Um, this is how you, a standard reference, right? This is how you would do it, right? So you have the authors here, uh, first, dot, uh, last name, dot, first name, initial, and then you have middle, middle initial as well. So then they did the first name, first initial, uh, middle initial here. They did that for each of their authors. This is the publication year, okay? Uh, this is the title, okay? This is the name of the journal. You have your journal. So it's the, the volume, so it's journal 38. Uh, this is the volume of that particular journal. And then these are the pages that where you would locate that particular article. So it's from page 258 to 268, so it's a 10 page uh, article. Okay, and this is the DOI, this is the digital object in, in, in the identifier, it allows you to find uh, the full text for that particular uh, article, okay? Each of your, and I, I'll, I'm going to I, uh, upload a APA format um, for uh, your articles, uh, for all your articles, for any resource that you use, uh, books, articles, videos, presentations, uh, whatever it is, but it shows you um, the format and how you're gonna identify, how you're going to format um, your reference list, okay? But again, we're gonna talk about APA a little bit more. I'm gonna talk you through and walk you through uh, how to, uh, how you wanna, format um, your reference list because that's one of the most important keys uh, to the format academic writing that's going to require the particular format that you follow particular uh, characteristics and rules and so we'll talk through that uh, this is a hanging uh, indent right so this is half an inch here uh, indent and so we'll I'll, I'll show you all how to do that as well uh, if you're all are not familiar with that Um, again, we're not going to go through this. I'm going to allow uh, Ms. Bryant uh, to talk to you a little about, more about this, but you will be tested on this, on some of these terms. So the Boolean operators and for and not. I didn't go through it in detail uh, today because I'm going to have uh, Ms. Bryant uh, do that. Okay. Um, so I was just doing a single search, right? I did a, a simple search with a single word or phrase just to kind of yield some, some articles, right? But I could have limited my search with different titles, with different and, ors, the asterisk. Uh, I can do all those things in order to kind of hone in and limit uh, my search, right? So I had, I went from 19,000 to 7,000 with just a general uh, date and just looking at uh, research articles, but I could have looked for keywords and it would have limited uh, that even more. Um, so I'll even show you. Let's go back. I'll show you what I'm talking about. Let's go back to the internet here. Let me go back. All right. So let me go back up. And I'm going to do uh, an advanced search instead of a basic search. Um, so I'm going to do mental health and, and college students. I'll do and African American. Uh, Southern. 
United States, right? And, right, uh, you could do a number of things, right? I could do or, right? But then I'll just press search. So right now, I think we have, we're at uh, 7,000. So let's do and African-American and Southern United States. I have three results. Three results just by adding it, okay? I went from 19 to 7, thousand to three results all right so now i only have three results here okay so again all of these things you can use those to uh, broaden or limit um your search area which uh which is helpful when you because you want to you want to eliminate a lot of the, the stuff that you don't need right you want to just keep the stuff that you could use and limiting your search saves you some time and having to go through and click on articles uh, and that's not it but if you limit it to a particular five, 10, maybe even 100 articles, you can go through those 100 articles and really be able to select the ones that you need and will be helpful for uh, research. Okay, let's go back. All right. Um, again, Web of Science, Scopus, like there's similar databases. Um, Ms. Bryan is going to go over those. Uh, in a little more detail with you. Um, so just be mindful of that. Um, but again, they let users perform searches for citations, specific articles. Um, you can use uh, different, you know, keywords uh, on a particular article or type topic, you know, that's relevant to your particular topic, your research topic. Uh, and then it says you can then search for subsequent articles that are cited, um, the site of the key article. So you have articles that then cite other articles and sometimes for me, when I'm doing a literature review and I found an article that I really, really like. I look at the articles that that article that I like has also cited. And I then go through their list and then I pick out articles out of that list because, again, those are other articles that I might be able to use for uh, my research. Okay. Um, you got psych articles, you have psych books, um, all of these we saw. Okay, you can look up uh, articles, books, you can look up uh, media, all of those things uh, can be used. Um, and the American Psychological Association, the APA, uh, maintains, again, several databases. In addition to just psych info, uh, you can look at specifically just full text scholarly articles uh, that is also um, um, located. Um, and let's see if we can go back uh, and find that in the library database. So let's go back. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to type in, let's go all the way back. Let's see if we can go back here. Okay. So I'm just going to type in, so you got APA Psych Info, you got APA Psych Articles. Okay. That's, that's the one that they mentioned. You got Journal of Psychology, the Journal of Humanistic Psychology. These are different journals, Journal of Black Psychology. Here are different journals that have particular articles. So if I clicked on the Journal of Black Psychology, click on that. It's going to take you to the Journal of Black Psychology. Um, but it says that it refused. So I'm going to check with um, Mrs. Bryan to see why that why that's happening. Okay. Uh, let's see if there's another one that we can click on that it will take us to. Okay. So here's the Journal of Psychology. So uh, it has the latest articles, these are our different volumes. So this is the volume from 57. Um, here are the different issues. Okay. So you click on one of these, you got full access to this one, right? So you can click on it and you'll identify different articles, right? Through thick and thin, exposure to Instagram advertisements, willingness to engage with parents, authoring practices, right? So all of these are articles that you could use in order to um, look up for your literature review, for your own independent research, or for articles for your collaborative research. Again, and this gives you the research articles that I'm looking for. So what you'll be required to do is submit a research article to me. I'll be I'll I'll either approve it or reject it. And if I reject it, then you have another opportunity to, to return. You'll have three opportunities, three opportunities uh, to again submit, and then either get it from uh, a value. Okay, but you have to find it. I have to find that empirical research article. Empirical research article. All right.
go back. Uh, other major, major databases, um, again, you got sociological abstracts um, for sociology. Uh, again, PubMed, ERIC, uh, LexisNexis. This is more uh, for business majors. Uh, this gives you information about uh, different companies. Factiva uh, allows, you know, general media sources and things like that. All right. So um, just Internet searches uh, really when you're looking at searching the internet, um, I talked about Google Scholar here, um, but again, you wanna be critically evaluative of what you find on internet. Um, really to improve your internet searches, you should again, look at how uh, different, how you find different sites, uh, use advanced search rules, um, and then again, critically evaluate what you find. Not every source is a good source. Uh, there are some satire, there are uh, anecdotes, there are blogs that are personal opinion, Right. So when you search for something, you want to make sure that it's a, a credible source, that the information is factual and that the way to, to determine if it's factual or not is determined is to go look to see other sources and see if they're all talking about the same thing. Right. So just don't 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 just don't look at um, online research resources and and take them for take them for what they are. Right. They're online. Some people can just like Wikipedia. Please don't use Wikipedia. Wikipedia is a source that's open. Right? So anybody can include and, and add anything they want to do to a particular source, right? So don't use Wikipedia as a source. I will ding you heavily if you use Wikipedia. Please do not, right? You can use a Google Scholar like I showed you. Uh, just Google Google Scholar. Here's the website. And you can look up websites. General um, words and phrases will give you and yield your results, results. But you're going to be mindful of what those resources are, what those sources are. Uh, make sure that they are what you need. Okay. Um, here are some other strategies um, for searching research databases. Again, uh, when you look at this, uh, again, think through. Um, we're not looking for uh, review and meta analysis. We're not looking for that in the research. You can use that for your uh, independent research proposal for your literature review because uh, it gives you a, a good summary of past research. But we're not using those types of research. Uh, articles for our independent or our, excuse me, our collaborative research presentation. We're looking for an empirical research uh, uh, project, right? Specifically something in the U.S. Hopefully we can find something that's in the U.S. research that's been done in the U.S. But uh, if you want to publish, if you want to look at something that's outside of the U.S., please make sure that it's relevant to uh, people in our class, okay? But again, use several databases, uh, become familiar with available. Um, here are some other uh, general strategies that you can use. I'm not going to go through them. Um, you can look at this on your own. Okay. Uh, here are some psych info search strategies. Again, I'll let you allow you to look at those things on your own as well. Okay. And then some Google uh, search strategies, right? Using and, or, or not, you know, the Boolean phrases and terms. Uh, but use, be very specific. Whenever I use Google, I'm, I'm being very, very specific in what I search for because it can give you a whole lot of crap, right? A whole lot of stuff that you don't need, right? So when you're specific, it allows you to hone in on things that uh, are most relevant to uh, your research topic. All right, um, so that is it, okay? Uh, again, these are your, your view and your discussion questions. Um, very, very short chapter, but very, very important chapter because, again, we talked about it. The research question is that first step in the research process. You have to have your research question, your hypotheses and your prediction, right? Think about why we use theories, how, what are theories used for? Why are they so, so important to the field of social science, right? Behavioral science, um, distinguish between literature reviews, theory articles and empirical research articles, be able to do those three things, right? Distinguish, uh, describe the differences uh, in the ways that past research is found. Um, we use site info, the key articles, method of web source, web science, or Scopus. Um, so be able to do these things. Uh, and then what information does the researcher communicate in each of the sections of a research article? So we talked about those five distinct sections of the research article. Uh, the introduction, um, your method section, your results, um, your discussion section, uh, and uh, kind of your 
did I do all your methods, your, your introduction, um, your methods section, your results, um, your uh, discussion section, and then kind of your abstract, right? The abstract is written um, as your summary, right? So think about those five sections. Know what and how you, what you communicate in those sections. And B, you, you have to do that, know that for your own uh, research that you'll be doing um, for the particular class. So uh, be mindful of that as we move forward, okay? That is it for Chapter 2. Um, I hope, again, you all are, are doing well. And if you have any questions, please uh, feel free to email me. Uh, there will be an uh, assignment, and I'll send out an email for you all to kind of figure out what that is and how to complete it, okay? Uh, if you all have any, again, any other questions, please feel free to contact me um, via email. I'll talk to you soon. Take care.